Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. Today we're going to paint this little moose line and wash Christmas painting. Thank you to GJ Brooks Jr. on Instagram for the beautiful muse, by the way. As a special little Christmas present from me to you, I will make the drawing for this moose available on my Patreon for you to download. So just follow the link I'll put in the description to download it and then you won't have to worry about drawing it yourself. This video will give you a good taste of what you get when you join my Patreon, by the way. Add free videos, a view of my palette, reference photo, a supply list, and full voiceover instruction and explaining as I go so you can paint with me in real time. Also, when you join, you get instant access to a library of over 30 full tutorials with more being added every month. Please remember to subscribe as I upload new videos every week Leave me a comment or question so we can start a fun discussion. Love those and show me some YouTube algorithm love by watching this until the end so I can continue to bring you more and improve tutorials. All right, let's get started with this Merry Moose. I actually titled it Moose One Christmas Tree Zero. Here we go. All right, before we get started, let's look at the supply list and what you will need. And here's a, a typical supply list I provide to my Patreon students for each tutorial. And for this video, I painted this little guy as an eight by 10, just so I had plenty of room to play around with those soft lights. I used a size eight round watercolor brush. I use silver black velvet brushes. They are my all time favorite, but any brush that you can get a decent point would be good. Uh, there aren't very many tiny little details, so you can probably get away with anything that you probably have on hand anyway. Another good thing to have is a script brush or size zero round. And for this tutorial, I used a Tombow Funasuke calligraphy pen. And the thing about this pen is it is made for art projects like this. So uh, it's pretty light fast. And then when you touch it to the paper lightly, it makes a thin line. And then when you push down, and makes thicker lines so you can get really pretty calligraphic lines, which is nice when you're doing line and wash work. And then for paint, I'm um, not picky. You can pretty much use whatever you have. As long as you have a blue, red, and yellow, you can mix any other color you might need. Um, I used myself, I used ultramarine blue, M. Graham naphthol red, Holbein um, Oriolan, which is my favorite yellow, other Oriolans are not light fast, but Holbein Oriolan is light fast, by the way. I like to use Windsor Newton, Windsor Violet, and any, any green works. I used Holbein Permanent Green Light myself. Uh, I love to use Burnt Sienna for fur. Other supplies, I recommend using a good watercolor cold press paper. You'll be able to get the soft glowing lights with a nice uh, cotton-based cold press watercolor paper. I use Arches cold press 140 pound. A white gel pen is pretty indispensable for putting in those little eye glints especially. I use medical surgical micropore tape for taping my picture down, although this isn't going to get really, really wet. Well, actually, you know what? It is going to get wet because we have to wet the whole area before we put in the lights. So never mind you're going to want to tape down your watercolor paper to a board. And I use Elmer's glue brand backing boards and they come in all kinds of different sizes and the sizes and they're pretty reasonably priced. And then uh, if you want to do a little bit of masking, which you don't need to do any masking if you just decide to use a gel pen for the little glints in the eyes for the most part, that's what that's for. But you can use masking with soap and an old rigger for masking if you want to. All right, let's get started on the actual process of this painting. All right, here we go. So the first thing that I do is erase my pencil lines a little bit with a soft eraser. Uh, any soft art eraser will do, a kneaded eraser will work. And I use a, a pencil hardness of two when I'm drawing my um, underdrawing because softer pencils will leave uh, their dust behind and then when you paint through that dust it makes mud so use harder pencils when you're doing your initial drawing and there I've got my Tombow pen I was showing you guys but I already showed you that in the opening 
remarks, so I don't need to tell you about that again, but this is my little spray bottle. I use it all the time. It has water in it, and I use it to pre-moisten my paper sometimes. Sometimes I spray edges that have gotten too stiff and hard. I use it all the time on almost every painting in there. I just used it to get everything wet. So to start this painting, you're going to get everything really nice and wet. It can be pretty drippy, actually. And um, here I, I just did a little test dot of yellow and then I decided, okay, I need to, I need to use a paintbrush and get this even wetter. And it shouldn't be puddling, but it should be glistening. So not drippy wet, but everywhere is evenly wet. And you want your water to be pretty even across the paper over the entire paper so you don't get weird little edges, but also just so that the glow of the lights, um, they soften nice and um, easily. And here we've gotten a little bit further in the painting and I've added quite a few lights and I paint them on in an uneven pattern and not with equal amounts of every single light. And these colors I've used are Windsor and Newton, Windsor Violet, Permanent Green Light, I used that blue is actually, I don't think I talked about that in the opening credits and I apologize for that. It's a, um, a peacock blue, but you can use any turquoise or cobalt blue would be really perfect. Uh, any blue that you have would work. And now I'm getting some naphthol red and I'm going to drop that in again. Remember to keep your, um, lights uneven. You don't want them evenly spaced out. It won't look natural. So some should be closer together and there should be a cluster here and then a few spaced out there. And uh, you don't want your colors um, evenly spaced and you don't want your lights evenly spaced because that's not how Christmas lights roll. And so now if your paper starts getting too dry, you can give it a spritz or two with a bottle of misting water is uh, what would work best. Now here I'm doing a little test with my calligraphy pen to see if it's okay to use it on semi-moist paper because I'm not used to this pen. I had At this point when I made this painting, I wasn't used to using this calligraphy pen. It was pretty much the first time I'd used it. But it did seem to work just fine on, a, on slightly damp paper. And you can see how I'm drawing around the lights. So it looks like the lights are glowing in front of the antlers. And another thing that I did is when I went around curves, I pushed a little harder to make the line a little bit thicker. And the more you can vary your line as far as thickness and thinness and also curviness, the more interest you're going to have. And when you have breaks in the line, like I do here, that also adds to the interest. So variety, curves, those are the things that often make a painting look aesthetically pleasing. And that rule definitely applies to these antlers. Curves look good. Straight lines do not look good. They don't look natural. So keep everything nice and curving. Keep your lines thick in some parts and thin in others. If you use a calligraphy pen, if you just use a regular black pen like a Sharpie, which is perfectly acceptable if you're using these just for fun little fast Christmas cards, then you won't be able to get thicker lines as easily but it'll still look good. Line and wash just looks good because of the contrast between the black ink and the white of the paper. It's just gonna look good no matter what you use. All right, and then I'm carefully drawing around the eyes. I'm trying to get the shape of the eyes right and all the funny little bumps that are in a moose's head. I was making sure that I got those. I think a moose and his nose looks kind of awkward. I think that's part of their charm. So I was definitely trying to capture that. There's a pretty much only the only straight line is his neck, isn't it? There that I put in. And you can see how static that looks compared to the curving lines. So that's why you don't want to have too many straight lines. So just be aware of that. Use curves. And here I'm pre-moistening everything so I can just softly fill in with soft edges inside with the, the brown coloring that I'm going to put into this painting. And this is what we watercolors call charging. You get everything wet where you want to put paint 
and you keep everything dry where you don't do not want paint and then you charge in your color like right here so that's pure ultramarine actually no that's pure burnt sienna right there that I'm putting in with my silver black velvet size 8 brush getting some violet over there I love to mix Windsor Violet with Burnt Sienna to get a cooler brown. I think it's just so pretty. It's such a delicate violet when you add the Burnt Sienna to it. And especially in animal fur colors, it's really quite effective. And then I added even more Windsor Violet and a little bit of ultramarine blue to make it look black like that. I'm not using a black paint here. I'm using, um, and here you see me um, pounding my painting on my table to get it to drip like that. So of course I had to have pretty moist paint to get it to drip like that. But I thought that was a neat little effect. You can or cannot do that. You decide if you like that. If you like it, go for it. Do some pounding. <laughs> it might get out some of your frustrations from surviving the year 2020. God bless us all. All right, so I'm using a cooler brown there, which means I added some ultramarine blue to my burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna, just mix red and yellow and a little bit of blue until you get a kind of toned down browner looking orange. Brown is basically just orange with blue added. All right, and then I go in with thicker cream consistency paint. Cream consistency paint means that I used thicker paint with less water if you have not checked it out, check out my watercolor basics playlist where I talk, where I have a video about cream consistency versus milk consistency versus tea consistency paint. And I'll try to link that here. And there I'm very carefully putting the eyes in. If you don't want to get as literal as I did with the detail, you don't have to. I even save the glints of his eyes because I just think that adds so much character to him. And then I ran, went around the outside of his eyes and put in some darker shadows to really uh, bring attention to his eye area. It's just kind of my style that I do in all my paintings. I kind of highlight the eyes and make that the most detailed part of the painting. And then I'm just continuing to fill in some brown color, fill in a little bit of uh, information in, the, in those ears, trying to paint around the little lights that are glowing into the ears. Make sure you get the ear holes nice and dark too. That'll add some depth and dimension to how they look. Getting some more Windsor Violet over there mixed up with some ultramarine blue so I can get a really dark, dark. That's what's so nice about ultramarine blue. You can mix it with other paint colors and really get a nice dark black color. So ultramarine blue is indispensable in the palette just for its mixing strength alone to make beautiful dark colors. I'll remind you here too, be sure to check out my other Christmas tutorials. And I've got a whole library full of how to paint animals library uh, in my YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out if you're new to my channel and be sure to subscribe because I upload new videos every week. All right, now I decided to lightly put some color in the antlers to make them stand out just a little bit more, but I just put the color here and there as if the glowing lights were cutting into the color of the antlers, but just in a few places where there was no glowing lights, I put in some antler color and I think it kind of made them pop out a little bit better. So I do like how that ended up looking. I used a gray mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue with mixed with a lot of water to get that light 
antler color. In watercolor, to get your colors looking lighter, you just add more water. So that's what I did. This is very watery paint that I'm applying. And it doesn't mean your brush is dripping. It means that, you know, you could take a dry brush and then just dip the tip of it in so your brush isn't too drippy and then paint with that so you have more control over the paint. But the paint in your brush is still really light because of all the water in the paint but it's also not dripping because it's not all soaked up in the heel of your brush. All right, I'm getting a bunch of lamp black. Us watercolor purists call that cheating, but this is such a tiny area, it really does not matter. And I just felt like I needed to get the little, um, the eyes, the pupil area, and the eyeliner a little bit darker just to really pop those eyes out so uh, high contrast and hard edges and tiny little details, which I call the jewelry. That is what calls attention to an area. So that's why I put all those aspects into these areas. Right, so I'm just putting in tiny, tiny little details. I'm squinting a lot. I've got my glasses on and I'm actually using my silver black velvet size eight round here. But for these little details in the eyes, you really could use that little calligraphic pen and it would probably be a lot easier. But I'm just trying to get the little um, shapes of the glints right, just making tiny little millimeter strokes to get little tiny details in the eyes just right because I do think that adds so much. And you notice how I got the eyelashes out going out into the background space. So those are really obvious. And I'm just working on smallest little tiny details to get these eyes right and putting in some eyeliner to really pop those eyes out nicely and give them a nice doughy look. And here I'm putting a little bit of more dark um, lip color in there just to pop out his mouth a little bit more, make him look completely adorable. All right, let's sign this again. For signing it, I'm going to use my calligraphic Tombow Funasuke calligraphic pen. And this has been my new go to pen for signing a lot of my paintings because it just has a pretty effect. So there we go. By the way, and here I'm removing that micro pore tape. You can see my painting got a little bit warped because of all the water that I used. Um, you can put your painting in between a couple books and moisten the back of it, and overnight it'll flatten out nicely if you just put some put it between two hard surfaces overnight, and that'll straighten out your watercolor paper. So there we have it, you guys my line and wash mousse painting. I'm going to try to fit in the other more complex mousse painting in the next few days for you guys too. So be on the lookout for that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You're welcome to paint this for your own Christmas cards. If you, if you want to sell the original of this painting, that's fine. Just please remember to tag me in social posts when you paint for my tutorial. I always appreciate that. So I can continue to grow this channel and bring you better content. I'll see you guys next time. Happy holidays.